Hi, it's Paul, and today I'm an old man with a Lexivon Mitre Protractor. So, the story behind this is I did the other two videos on the Silverline Digital Angle Finder and the Bora Mitrix and how to use them to measure angles for things like skirting, baseboard, um, architrave round doors. And a guy called Ron Glazer from Lexivon in USA emailed me and said, would I be interested in having a look at this and doing a review on it? So I said, fair enough. So I have to say at this point, that makes this video, uh, according to the UK Advertising Standards Agency, an advert or a gifted video. Um, I'm not being paid by Lexivon to do this. The guy sent me it free. He didn't ask me to do a good review or a bad review. He just said, would I review it? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I haven't taken it out of the box yet. I've never used it. I haven't used one like this. I've seen the Starrett version on Finnish Carpentry TV. Um, seen him use it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't normally do unboxings, but I just thought I'd show you it in the box because it's quite nicely packaged. So here we go then. So what we've got in the box is the mitre protractor itself. Seems fairly robust. It's aluminium. Seems quite nicely machined. Have another look in a second. We've got a little explanation of how to use it, which I'll take a look at off camera in a minute. Got an invitation to... Uh, talk to Lexivon about whether you like it or not <clears throat> and so this is it there's a little instruction on each side single cut use outer scale to set mitre saw settings for fitting a single piece to an angle and mitre cut use the inner scale reading to set the mitre cut for an accurate mitre joint and the most obvious thing I can do to start with is if I put it to approximately a right angle, you'll see that if I give you a close up on the outer scale, it reads naught degrees, and on the inner scale, it reads 45 degrees. And this goes back to what you might call the oddity of mitre saws in the measurement on the base of the mitre saw of exactly what angle it's at because we know looking at this it's a right angle it's 90 degrees but the mitre gauge shows us it as zero degrees or 45 degrees depending on what you're going to use the cut for so let's go and put it onto a, a wall and measure an angle and see if we can cut a piece of skirting or baseboard to fit on that angle. So first up some examples of applications. Here's a typical external corner in my house that I'm just sticking it on to indicate how it can work. You could also easily measure an internal corner. Normally, as I've said, you would cope an internal corner on a skirting or baseboard, but you can do it with a mitre, why not? Here's an internal corner measurement on door surround or architrave, and that is a standard thing you would mitre. And here is the same application on the external angle of that corner, which, of course, is the same angle. It's the same mitre. And now we're going to put it into actual use in the house. These are the two corners in my house. I've chosen these for a specific reason because I know they're different angles. So let's measure the first one. Let's put the angle finder on or the mitre protractor on the corner of the angle. And if we look at it in close up, we can see the angle here. So that's our indication. Remember, you're looking at the inside scale. And then we're going to put it on the other corner and going to do exactly the same again. Put it on the corner, make sure it's flat to the walls or the skirting board in this case. And again, using the inside scale, we're going to take the measurement. So we can then look at the two measurements and this is what we see. 
46.5 on one and 44 on the other. So then we're going to take that to the saw and we're going to cut. Okay, so now I'm out at the mitre saw. I'm going to use the little DeWalt today because that's the one that normally a DIY I would probably have that size at all. Um, actually, it would be far easier if I used the big Metabo up here, but we're not going to, and I'm going to go the straight white. I've got my tool with me, but we've now done with that. We've taken the measurements and the part of that is done. So we can put that down. Here's my measurements. I wrote them down on a scrap piece of paper, 44 and 46.5 are the two angles for the two corners that I've measured. So we're gonna cut them and I'm gonna show you the issues that you may run into. Okay then, and once again, I stress these issues that I'm going to show you are nothing to do with this tool. It's just that when you come to transpose the measurements over to your mitre saw, whatever method you use, whether you use this or whether you use an angle finder or whatever you use, you may run into the problems and I'm going to quickly show you what those problems are. Problem number one, this is a piece of 120mm skirting board, baseboard, uh, or sort of five inch four and three quarter inch if you want it in imperial and it's great on the flat but you can't fit it under the saw if you stand it up now it is possible if you put a spacer block behind it to a degree you can get a bigger piece than you'd get at the back here but you will not get this height of skirting or baseboard on this little saw so we're gonna to have to cut it flat if you're gonna cut it flat the issue there is that you're gonna be using the increments the graduations on the scale on the back of the saw and not the increments on the front of the saw two problems there one is that with the front of the saw the base of the saw you can swing it 45 or 48 degrees in either direction on the back of the saw this is a single bevel saw so it'll only swing in one direction the other is because these markings are further out on the radius you've actually got effectively an easier to read set of increments it's much easier to use the increments on here than it is to use the increments on here Nonetheless, that's what we're going to crack on with. We're going to use these increments on the back. This will set anything up to 48 degrees. Uh, it's got a stop on the back of it. It stops automatically at 45 degrees, but you can flip that out of the way and you get an extra three degrees out of it. So we can set it at where we want anything up to 48 degrees. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set it to our two measurements that we've got on our bit of wood as accurately as we can and we're going to see what sort of a result we get because it's pre-finished this skirting board this has got like a it's almost a melamine vinyl type finish on it um, i'm going to cut it from the front because that's going to give me a better cut edge so first of all i'm going to set it up So here's the first thing. Here's the mark on my mitre saw. And I've put a black mark next to it to highlight it, but it's actually the top of this ridge that sits on the 45 degree mark. So I'm just gonna adjust that over to about 46.5. Okay, that's probably about as near as I'm gonna get it. So we're gonna give it a go at that and we're gonna cut some baseboard got my workpiece clamped down it's in a rough enough position it's far enough across to get a cut on that so I'm gonna fire it up and cut it so all good first cut made let's take it out and have a look clean enough cut what I'm gonna do now is do the other end cut and the other end cut is obviously going to need to angle in opposite to that 
So I need this end to be cut that way. Okay, second cut ready to make. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to cut a square ended cut and get myself two pieces short pieces so that I can glue them up and then go and try them in place. one of my cuts see you can see that it's actually got a fair old angle on it I think that might be too much but we'll glue it up and we'll go and test it but before we do that we're going to do the two at 44 so flick the saw over again Degree back from 45, so about there. And we'll do another two cuts. Okay, so there's my two pieces. So I'm now going to glue both sets up. Let's see how you glue. side and away we go Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, you. What we can notice, if I give you a 
down view onto them, you can see that this one splays outwards and this one pinches inwards because one was below 90 degrees and the other was above 90 degrees. So we'll go and try them in place. This is the first one in place. This is the one that's slightly under 90 degrees. You can see it's a little bit out. If I push it in, it just closes up. Although, <clears throat> if I lift it up now and put it against the plaster wall, it's actually the opposite way around. But it's within probably about half a degree. It's really close, so I can live with that. We'll now skip to the other one. This is the one that's slightly over 90 degrees. And again, really close. I'm perfectly happy with that. Very pleased. Works really well. Again, stick it up against the plaster wall and show you what it looks like. And again, shows a little bit out there, but it's not bad. So as you can see, it definitely works without a doubt. Um, interesting to look at the the angles on the two sets of mitres that I cut because there is a huge difference. Question is though, uh, would I use it in preference to the other methods that I've shown? So particularly before I said I like the Bora Mitrex because I didn't have to worry about the adjustment of my mitre saw. I can literally just take the angle with the Bora Mitrex and I can walk to the mitre saw and not worry about settings or calibration or anything. However, that said, if the mitre saw is, as he says, in my case, it's down in my garage, and if I'm doing a uh, skirting board, baseboard in my house, it's a minute or so to walk backwards and forwards between the two, and it means I've got to walk backwards and forwards for every single cut, measure the angle, go to the saw, cut, go back to the room. I can't do a batch of measurements. With this tool, with the mitre protractor, and to be fair, with a digital angle finder, um, but with this, I could do an entire batch of cuts. So I want to show you what I mean with that. This then, is the layout of my living room. Door into the living room, there's a bay window here, there's a French door opening out onto the garden back here, and there are a lot of angles. As I've mentioned in the past, and as many people mention on their own channels, the internal angles you tend to do with a cope. You can mitre them, and you would be able to do it with this tool, but generally speaking, you'll do it with a cope, so you'll cut one inch square, and you'll cut the other piece to match the profile of the of the square end. But to do all of the external angles, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a bit of a pain if I want to do the whole room, because I've got to keep, as I say, walking backwards and forwards to the saw on every individual cut if I'm doing it with the Mitrix. If I'm doing it with this, with the protractor, or as I mentioned with a, a digital angle finder, I can measure all the angles, just note them down, and then go and cut each piece when I get to the mitre saw. So what I would do is something along the lines of this. I've drawn a sketch of the room, I've measured all the individual pieces of skirting or baseboard, and I've numbered them all on the other page. And what I've got, I've got an angle for the left-hand end, I've got an angle for the right-hand end, and I've got the length. So what I would do, I would work clockwise round the room. I just prefer coping the left-hand end of the board when I can. Don't know why, just me, maybe because I'm left-handed. So I would start there, working from a square end at the door frame i'd go along and i'd work in that direction so what i can do 
is I can measure all of these angles and all of these lengths in advance and I can go and cut the whole lot and then take all of the wood or the MDF or whatever back to the room and install it. <clears throat> so what I'll do is this. This is the first one. It's I've got it in metric. Doesn't matter what you use, metric or imperial. I've got it in metric because I use metric a lot. So I've got this length as 2768 millimetres, which is what I tend to use. I've got the left hand end as being a square cut. That's a 90 degree cut. And I've got the right hand end as being a square cut. So I'd have it square that end, square that end, because it's my first bit. This end square on the door frame, this end square on the wall. Piece two is the first one where I actually come to an angle. On the left hand end, I'm going to cope it, because I'm going to cope it to the profile of the first piece. And on the right hand end, I've got an angle of 46. So that angle is 46. Then on piece three, the left hand angle is 46. It's 915 long and the right hand end is squared off and so on and so forth. So I could cut each piece of these and prep the whole lot. And that I think would make this incredibly useful. So there you have it. Review on the Lexivon Mitre Protractor. Um, would I buy it? Well, as I said at the beginning, to be fair, this was sent to me free. But having now used it, in fairness, if I lost it or broke it, and I can't see it breaking, to be honest, I would buy another one because I'm actually quite impressed with the idea. Do I like it better than the digital angle finder? Well, in some ways, yes. In some ways, the digital angle finder is fabulous because it's very, very accurate. I assume it goes down to, I think, two decimal place points on the degrees, which is great, but I can't set two decimal place points on my saw. And even if I did, my cutting isn't that accurate, neither is the saw. So this is perfectly adequate. It's a blooming sight more robust than the digital angle finder. Um, to be honest, if you've damaged this, it would be fairly obvious. With the digital angle finder, how do I know it's accurate? The answer is to that, I do not know. With the Mitrix, it's different because you're not using measurements. You're just using literally the angle that you've looked at. But this, I have to say, uh, very impressed with it. So one Thank final you. thing, despite what I said earlier on in the video, or what I put on as a note, I did go back and read the instruction book and although it's fairly small i've got to say it really impresses me it's real nice quality print it's readable it's not just a cheap photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy which is what comes with so many tools these days and it's pretty good it's got a huge section, well, huge section. The biggest amount of it is on doing cuts for crown moulding. Crown moulding being uh, the stuff that goes around the top of your ceiling. Um, we don't generally use it in the UK. We use coving when we do that kind of thing, but it's it's it what well, goes in and out of popularity. Coving is is the same kind of thing. It's a finish to go in the corner of the ceiling, but it's usually made out of uh, the same stuff as plasterboard, chip rock, or, or or even plaster. Um, in the states, I think you guys tend to have it out of MDF or or timber, which is fine. And it's complex stuff to cut because it sits at an angle in your ceiling and also you've got your angles in the corner so it's compound angles when you're cutting it and there's a section in here that explains how to use your mitre protractor to work out your angles on crown moulding i'm not going to go through that 
because it's not what I do. It's not what we tend to do over here. But quick news flash that I realised while editing. This is coving. It's made out of jip rock or plasterboard, if you like, drywall type stuff. We don't cut it with a mitre saw. This is the trim that goes on top of your cabinets. We do cut this with a mitre saw and it is compound angle. So if you're interested, drop me a note in the comments and I'll do a video on that. Sorry for the interruption. Back to the main video. So there you have it. Review of the Lexivon Mitre Protractor. Thank you, Ron, for sending it to me. And if you like opening my eyes to it, I have to say I'm quite impressed with it. I'm very impressed with it. Sorry. I um, hope it's been of some use to you all. If it has, please feel free, free to uh, like, subscribe and all that malarkey. If you've got any questions or comments, stick them in the comments below or wander over to the website oldmanwith.com where you can ask questions confidentially if that's what you wish to do. There's an ask a question thing that doesn't require you to sign up or put your details in or anything like that. Obviously, um, it's helpful to have an email address to come back to you, but it's not public. Um, other than that, again, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.